Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Queen's Club uh, on this quite grim and dreary Thursday afternoon uh, in London. Uh, so the best place you can be uh, is indoors watching some top quality tennis uh, here at the Sir John Riplatt British Open 2023. Quarter-finals day today. We've got four fantastic matches coming up uh, over the course of today. Uh, Giles Doy and Dan Warboys uh, starting off proceedings in the commentary box uh, today. Um, and yeah, we've got a really exciting match coming up, Dan, uh, with uh, world number two, John Lumley, and uh, Mathieu Sarong uh, coming up. Should be a fantastic game. I think two different styles of play, two people in good form. Um, they're both looking very, very ready for this one. So I think it's going to be a very exciting one to watch. Got some of the some of the stats here from Mathieu coming up on the screen. Uh, Mathieu came through uh, his first uh, first match on Tuesday. Uh, sorry, correction, it was on Monday uh, against Zach Edel. Uh, a very heavily delayed match. Uh, it should be added as well. Um, came through in four sets. Um, and uh, quarterfinals have, have typically been kind of where uh, matches. Uh, charges of the British Open have got to. Um, probably quite a tall order today uh, coming up against the uh, world number two and 2021 champion uh, John Lumley um, but we know he's going to have we're going to have a, a great tussle and a great contest uh, particularly seeing Mathieu really kind of targeting a lot of floor shots I imagine as well. Uh, Dan take us through John Lumley. John Lumley, who's been in absolutely fantastic form this year. Um, 11 point, my negative 11.5 handicap coming out of Ladies Philadelphia. Obviously the world champion final this year with a fantastic game against Camden. US Open finalist. So I think it's going to be a great match coming up. Paris, an amateur player. His name is Mathieu Salon. At the service end, we have professional and number two seed from Philadelphia. His name is John Lumley. <laughs> this match is the best of five, six game sets played off level. First game, low. All right, off we go. Strong start there by John. Fantastic railroad to start off proceedings. We were talking about the gallery hits from Matthew, weren't we, before we started? Actually, that's a rare gallery hit from him. Yeah, normally uh, Matthew is quite, quite fond of uh, keeping things nice and straight and kind of very much playing kind of tight floor shots uh, in terms of setting chases. Ooh. Oh, fantastic one there by John that's kept out of the dead on amazing shot. Up by Drew there. Fantastic serve there. Uh, we've already uh, name checked uh, our marker for this afternoon's match, Drew Lyons. Uh, now the head professional down at Seacourt, but uh, I'm, I'm going to describe him as a veteran of uh, oh. a number of British Opens uh, and obviously knows this court very very well uh, during his tenure here uh, as one of the pros. Uh, he'll be taking us through two of the matches today, Neil McKenzie, uh, Queen's Pro will be taking us through the other two. Game point already for John, uh, second gallery.
Oh, great rest there to finish. John will be a, a bit disappointed. His first attempt of taking down that second gallery was a little bit too high. He won't be too upset by the score, though. Great shot by Mete here, though. Lovely shot. Oh. It's a little bit a little bit short on that, and then he just dispatched it nicely into the corner. Oh his falling is just so superb, isn't it? It's just every time. Something we've actually just even very quick, very briefly just seen there. Um, John, uh, I think something we started to develop quite recently is this double handed backhand, um, which I know is um, quite, a, quite a rare treat amongst uh, kind of the, the top level professionals. Um, Bryn Sayers really kind of being the only sort of well known um, user of the double handed backhand, but I'm kind of wondering if that's just a different part of his game or a new part of his game that he's brought in um, over the last couple of years or so. It's probably helped him uh, you know, get his way up the rankings a little bit more. Yeah, that's a good observation there actually. It's um, something definitely he's brought into game relatively recently and it seems to be working absolute dividends for him. It looks like mm -hmm. we've got a, maybe a change up of serve here from John. Early opportunity for Macho to get back on the scoreboard. He's got half a yard to beat there. Not with that though. Not enough power to get down the court or into uh, into the dead on. disappointed with that shot. Yeah, a little bit a little bit too casual, mm. you might think. Oh. There were that double handed backhand again that worked perfectly. Yeah, really pinning Macho right at the back up against the hazard wall. Forcing a mistake. Just got to take advantage of this. leave. He needs to get down this end again. It's interesting he hasn't gone for the underarm twist yet actually which um, was working really well for him in the last round match. So we've got uh, some of the most recent uh, matches that John and Matthew have played uh, although I think we might be missing a match so the last meeting was uh, in the US Open this year. Mm. It was a quarter final match uh, between John and Mathieu. Uh, that one was a mostly quite straightforward affair for John, winning that one uh, love three and one. Um, 
uh, but, but Mathieu um, not not had much luck um, over John uh, in quite a few quite a few attempts. Well, Game great tennis, receiver. well played. Two games to love. Two love, first set. So it really seems like quite an important match for to get back into the game. Three love it is a little bit of a hard task. Shot there. Back to back targets there going on with the uh, lovely main wall force from John, followed up with a backhand into the grill from Matthew. So we have got the live chat up and running. Do let us know where you are joining us from today. Uh, it's, I imagine, it's a perfect time for some breakfast and some. Uh, and some court tennis uh, over on the east coast if you're joining us from there do let us know uh, do let us know how you think this match is going to go uh, do you uh, do you do you think uh, John's going to uh, make this a straightforward make this a straightforward affair or uh, could could Mathieu start to pull something out of the bag Sneaked over the net. <coughs> it's a lovely cut volley. Not enough to beat Chase no. 1 and 2, though. Very unlucky. Bit of a questionable bounce as that came mm. off the floor and off the back wall. Looks like it's caught Matthew out a little bit by surprise. Yeah. Great composure there from John just putting it away into the onto the winning gallery. <coughs> Oh, fantastic shot, right into the base of the timbre, rolling out, you're not going to get those ones back easily. Just missed that grill high. A bit too high. Lovely aggressive play there to force the chase. So we've got the current world rankings up on the um, screen now. Yeah, we've got a. Uh, I think both players are, are going to be quite comfortably finishing the year uh, in their in their current rankings. Uh, John uh, with a 
uh, a bit of a gap to to Camden uh, as as with world number one, um, but also a good comfortable amount of space between himself and obviously Rob uh, stepping back from the singles um, stepping back from the singles game. Uh, we naturally start to see his uh, world ranking points start to fall. Um, but there's still quite a bit of gap oh. between John and uh, Ben Taylor Matthews uh, in the next uh, as, as the next ranking. Fantastic cut okay, bowling into the corner to win the chase. Four games to love. Four games to love now. John's leading. He's looking very comfortable out there. He's playing some great tennis. A lot of main wall shots coming off so far in these early first set encounters, really. Yeah, we saw quite a bit of that with Match's first match uh, against Zach Edel, um, which is a, uh, a quite a quite a close four set match. Mm. Um, but we we saw a lot of uh, main wall activity there, um, particularly in the second set from Match. Uh, really, just taking any chance to um, put put pressure there under under Zach's uh, under Zach's game. Oh, two fantastic volleys off the tambo there, and then just dispatched into the grill. Some real attacking uh, attacking shots there from John, uh, volleying stuff off the tambo. So going back to the, the world rankings, you've got Mathieu uh, down at uh, world number 10 uh, with just over 13,000 points. Um, had a fantastic season actually. He's had a, he's had a very, very good season. Um, the uh, British Open has not always been a happy hunting ground uh, for, for Mathieu. Um, but again, he's got a bit of a, a gap between himself and Leon at world number 9. Great tennis there. Um, but also a, a little bit of a gap, about 3,000 points or so between himself and uh, Rob Shankman, world number 11. Probably not going to get that overturned in this tournament, but uh, Mathieu will, will need to be very wary of the, uh, of the, of the up-and-coming Brit, uh, certainly in future tournaments. Service advantage. Talking of Rob Shankman, uh, just going through our quarter-final lineup uh, for this afternoon. Uh, Rob Shankman plays after this match uh, up against the uh, fourth seed, Nicky Howe. Which should be a great game, actually. It's just, like we said before, it's two completely contrasting styles of play. It'd be really interesting to see how they both approach it. It's really interesting that he's going for a lot more of the gallery shots than in previous games, as we said before, but he's really continued that throughout the game. It's a great pick up into the ground. serve again there. He's two great serves, two completely different serves in a row. Same outcome. Uh, 
now finding ourselves barely just over the 15 minute mark into this match and uh, John has been presented with two set points here. He's come out very aggressively and very positively and I think it's really taken the sword to the game and he's doing really well. Yeah and uh, I think the, the control that he's had uh, down, particularly down the service end, mm. um, controlling the amount of serves that he's done uh, but also really making those pairs well. Sure, we've had a, a few uh, a few a few wild shots, uh, a few kind of missed targets that I'm sure he'll be disappointed by. That's a good point. But overall it's been a very controlled first set. Sim John Lenny, six love, seals it with a dead on. Wow. Fantastic play. Great way to start the second set there. Fantastic cross-court tennis there. Brilliant style. <coughs> well, I'm wondering a little bit if Mattia really wants to be trying to get John into, into playing long rests. I'm not 100% not sure that's going to be a, uh, a good way of trying to get points off John in this match. No, I mean the error rate by John is incredibly low, so you have to really do something special in those long rallies to force him into a mistake. shot there by John. <coughs> Two in a row, unbelievable. Well, I was just thinking that we, we've been quite light on targets actually. Um, Dan, I appreciate this is your first time <laughs> in the commentary booth. The, the the phenomenon of the, the commentator's curse, I can assure <laughs> you, particularly when you're sitting up here, is very, very real. <laughs> uh, I think John needed that, I think. Just get down this end and get back on control with the serving. Imagine we'll take a look at some of the key numbers from the first set. Uh, so that was a, a six love win to uh, to to John, and only five targets actually during that first set, which is really interesting. Yeah, and I think I think you can you can see the I think the the big statistic there points won twenty eight mm. points to nine, uh, and two of those you know, two of those are coming from grills from from Mathieu. So John's really uh, really preventing Mathieu from scoring opportunities. Played. I think uh, another another curious stat from that's the average chase length uh, matches uh, chase average chase there was second gallery compared with second gallery chief. Um, compared with uh, five and six by John. I think in the previous game against Zach Eadle it was a lot lower than that, wasn't it? As well, it was a lot deeper into the court. I think it was five and six, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So it shows that he's had to change up his style of play, which obviously is an opposition play. You want to try and get your 
opponent doing. So John's doing that very effectively. He's stopping him getting those floor shots, and he's he's such a good retrieving the ball. That is not beating second gallery. Uh, almost took us out here in the collector <laughs> box. Heart in our mouth for a slight moment. We have a lot of expensive technology up here. Oh, that's a little bit loose for Machia. He had a bit more time on that to, to find a, a better spot than halfway up the back penthouse. He's just gone a bit high on a couple of occasions there, hasn't he, into the grill. Wow. And yeah, just thinking a bit about kind of the, the chases that Macho has been able to set. Uh, in this match we've had uh, three chases at second gallery. We've had one better than last, and we've had another one at worse than the yard. And, uh, and John has won all of those chases, uh, apart from one. Um, in the into the second gallery, so um, uh, Macho really need to find a, a different way, but also not really able to put any pressure um, with John down the service end. <coughs> oh, what a way to win! Look at that. Service advantage, chase better than a yard. That's a great stat actually on the um, chases set in one. First game, second set. That's seven games without reply so far. Chase one and two. They're both finding the cut today, aren't they? It seems to be coming down quickly. Hmm. dead on count up. Darren Long still out in the lead there with 43 which is an incredible number really. Yeah and actually um, uh, I know we've, we've kind of talked in commentary a little bit about um, uh, we talked a little bit in commentary a little bit about uh, kind of targets and players that are particularly proficient or, or effective at hitting targets. Um, Darren Long hitting grills is about as prolific as Rob Fay <laughs> hitting dead on. Yeah. Um, it's um, uh, you know you can you look at you look at the numbers in the in, in the match statistics. It, it's tr it's properly stark how um, how much of a part of Darren's game uh, and Rob's game as it was mm. uh, was about making the most of those targets. Yeah, they'd be calling him Master Chef soon. He's hitting the grill so much. It's actually incredibly rare for um game to feel this far apart. Actually, it's been so tight throughout the whole of the game. <coughs> yeah, Matthew's got a a good opportunity here. He's mm. got a couple of game points. He's got himself down the service end. Oh, uh, just nick that over. And a, a fair slice of luck as well to tap that into the net cord and just tickle it over for a, a hazard hazard line chase. I feel he deserves that. Uh, points one percentage now up on the score. That's John Lumley with 66%, which is another great stat. Yeah, and I think we've, uh, we, you know, with that we've got to be mindful that uh, thinking about John's uh, progress through the tournament up to this point, yeah. uh, you know, he had a, 
uh, on paper, uh, quite a straightforward win against Ollie Pudmore um, earlier in the week. It was 6 2, 6 and a half, 6 2. Um, but there were definitely, you know, there, there were definitely periods in that. That's a horrible, oh. s that's a horrible amount of misfortune. That's tennis. Uh, for Mathieu there, just right up against the hazard wall. Um, yeah, I thought Oli played really well in that game. Actually, it was. Uh, yeah, there was there was some some fantastic tennis there by Oli, and uh, definitely for for three or four games in the first and, and the third set, uh, it, it very much looked like um, very much a, an equal uh, equal match between the two of them. Uh, second set, much more one-sided to John, um, but I think what you're seeing there with that 66% uh, from there is, is a lot of the points that John won in that uh, in, in that match against Oli Pridmore. Uh, again, kind of controlling the controlling the game um, and and getting those points in. Mm. Um, yeah, as you would expect him to see. Yeah. So one all, second set. Matthew's got what he deserves there. He's played really well so far. He's been quite unlucky with a few bounces, and John's just been on fantastic form. Oh. Yeah, that's lovely control shot that, there. Some frustration from Matthew there. Mm. I think he had a uh, m some some much better options uh, f on that forehand up against the back wall. Uh, but kind of, I think he sort of mistimed the ball a little bit there, uh, putting it straight into the uh, back wall down at the service end. And John really just picking his moment to put it into winning gallery. Nice smile there from John. <laughs> we all knew what he was going we for. We knew there. what he was going for. <laughs> the um, eyes lit up. The, the eyes lit up. The gallery got bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's just a little bit too short. Straight into Hazard Second Gallery. It. I actually find that very comforting. That. Uh, that that even the best players in the world <laughs> can can see those uh, see those opportunities, and then stick it into Hazard Second Gallery like they'd always oh meant it to be that way. <laughs> He's going for the chase, really. <laughs> <laughs> I normally aim for that area and get the timbre, so... <laughs> <laughs> Hazard Second Gallery. Hazard Second. it be interesting to see how John plays this one, what service we go for here. so good off that volley off the um, off the service incredibly how consistent he is in that so there's one percentage come up there again like you said with John in the last game leading the rankings there yeah and I think you know you can also see Steve going with there um, up, uh, up, up there as well. Um, again, indicative of um, uh, his round, his match against Bertie Vallet on Tuesday as well. Off the chase, going to the server. Two games to one. Second set, two one. First dead on of the match, actually, for Mathieu. Not not all that surprising, given the, the kind of the nature and style of his of his game. Yes, and actually, the times that he has gone for it has been some fantastic defensive volleying as well. Oh, 
dispatched. Oh, what a beautiful shot that was. That was absolutely fantastic. Disguised into the forehand corner there on the hazard side. But with a with not not particularly quick either, but just, just the right amount of pace for him to, to plow to place that uh, with some pinpoint accuracy. Definitely starting to, to even up a little bit in terms of the uh, you know, the points, the, the balance of points in this, but um, uh, in this match, but game receiver, three games to one, and yet <laughs> commentates the curse again. side John mm -hmm. to great effect Great tennis, well played. 15 all. Match a little bit caught out by the pace on that uh, main wall return from John. It was a really clever change up actually, you just suddenly turned it on a little bit more. shot disguised off the main wall there yeah I'll, I'll have had that down as hitting the grill any day of the week yeah so we've already had some fantastic company up here today we've had Camden pop up and watch a little bit and now we've got Nicky up here as well he looks ready for his match later on yeah, so we've got, uh, I think we, we talked a little bit about uh, the schedule of events for, for today. Uh, so we've got Nicky and Rob Shankman who will take, uh, who will take stage uh, on the conclusion of this match, uh, not before 2pm. Uh, and then after that we will have uh, an all-British uh, all fight between Bryn Sayers and Ben Taylor Matthews, which I, th I think could be... Uh, I mean that that could be f that could be fireworks oh. all over the place. It's going to be interesting. Oh, great shot into the grill again. Just p starting to really pick up those targets in this second set. And then to finish off the day, we've just got a small matter of Camden Rivier versus Steve Agona, which will be. Uh, a fantastic way to finish off. It's not uh, a bad way to finish a great day in tennis. is really digging in actually he's playing very well I felt like 
Reserve's big point. Double-handed backhand volley again, which is just... He's just finding the length on that backhand into the hazard side superbly. Yeah, I mean, he might be a bit disappointed that he uh, that he didn't actually catch the, you know, the, the timbre there. Um, but he certainly did enough to uh, catch Mathieu out of position a little bit, um, bring himself... Uh, game point to go to go 4-1 um, which probably wouldn't feel particularly fair reflection of where this set's gone um, at the moment um, but that is I mean that's that's tennis sometimes that is it? tennis down at the far end of the court. back to the underarm twist there and it's paid off straight away of a great serve there yeah we saw a lot of the underarm twist in Mathieu's first match uh, with Zach uh, working really nicely for him 30, um, but we're still we're seeing a bit of a bit of a mix up in in serves uh, in this match so far I guess Mathieu may be still trying to work out a serve that's going to cause some issues for John that, that's the problematic part, isn't it? It's always... <laughs> pieces we've uh, had over the coverage for the British Opens is this kind of slow motion action replay just falling a little bit short of John's racket there so it's a great call cool. worse than the second gallery Chase the second gallery. Fantastic serve there, railroad really <coughs> kicking back into the wall and keeping <coughs> tight. One. You could kind of see them, Macho realizing that was going onto the back penthouse and kind of sitting up, uh, sort of resetting him, resetting his position for John's shot, just almost kind of knowing that uh, the point was almost certainly lost by that point. Another grill. Up. 
a fantastic pickup. First gallery, 15 love. Points on there, John Longley, 58 to Matthews, 29. in a replay of that fantastic grill shot there. Makes it look even better in slow-mo when you can see it going towards the wall as well. <laughs> I think it's also very much how we would all imagine that our kind of main wall grill shots would, would look kind of in our minds and I guess Let's keep that delusion up. Let's yeah. let's yeah. <laughs> let's let's keep that delusion up in our in our minds. <laughs> oh, fantastic pick up by John. Oh wow, great point to win there by John. He was on the back <laughs> foot and <coughs> he's turned it around to a fantastic That's dead on shot. Love set point. Not the most, uh, not the most clinical of railways there by Mathieu. John just able to pick his kind of moment. They've just been a bit loose today. So far. gone out into the rafters uh, I'm not 100% sure if he's going to come back actually I, th I think he's going to have that put on his bill <coughs> 30 pound a ball take that off uh, take that off the winnings <laughs> take that off the winnings <laughs> Love 6-1 so far in this quarter final match. Oh, it's a horrible bounce. Really started picking up those dead ons and grill shots in the last two set. I mean, the second set was he was hitting them for fun, and he seems to have started the third like that as well. Set two, so look at that. I mean, what a contrast to the uh, first set: five dead ons, three grills, two winning galleries. Seven leads, forty love, chase better than four. Yeah, and you, I think again, particularly down here. You can see the, uh, the, the, ser the serves won 39% against 64%. Makes such a big difference, doesn't it? If you can get on top with that serving, it, it's half the battle. Especially when you're serving the other First game, third set. One up. Beautiful, beautiful length there. Why John Lumley takes the first game in the third set. Gallery shot sets up nicely with John. Good anticipation there from Matthew yep. um, to try and cover that grill.
against the server. Two games to love. So two games to love so far. And you feel this game's starting to move away from Matcha quite quickly now. Some great deception there, that's ever so close to just tapping the side of the timbre wall, but uh, brings up another target for John Lumley. a rare mistake from John there, that looked, uh, looked a little bit wild. Some, some quite clear frame coming off that uh, off that volley. I think that's just the change of pace. Maybe just called him out a little bit there. That's quite interesting there, the chase is laid. 15 to 11. Pretty tight on that. Are we trying to see if we can get a, a picture of the ball that's stuck up in the rafters? We're getting some some nods from uh, from the camera teams here. Actually, he's really come at him at this game. Actually, he's suddenly changed up the way he's playing, and it's it's working well. Oh, well, here we go. We're going to try and see if we can find it. We're on ball cam. Is it that tiny little... <laughs> uh, so I hate to break it to you guys, but I don't think that is the tennis ball. So I think we can see it from our... We can see what you're looking at here from, from our commentary point. You've got one <laughs> yeah. here, but you've also got an equivalent thing on the, on the lights there as well. I don't think I've seen more than one go up yet. Uh, so it's a good, good try, guys, but do, do keep looking. It's like, where's Wally? Gallery is the chase. Switch out. Oh, well played. That's very nice. One game to two. Third well set. played. One, two. Another dead on shot there. Mm -hmm. Puts him well into double, f getting close to double figures now. The ninth one of the match. Going to the grill, going to the grill. Oh, that's yeah. a lovely shot, great weight. 15, he stitched up John there as much as he stitched up my prediction there. I'm still looking at the grill. <laughs> <laughs> he sold me three or four times there. <laughs> oh, 10. 40, 15. Unbelievable hitting from John. Targets keep on coming. Ten to two. I don't know the exact figures, but it, in, in fact, ten dead on shots from him not being down the hazard in that often is quite an incredible percentage, I'd have thought. Yeah, so it's a, it's about, um, 
a little bit more than 50-50. We're looking at about kind of 65, 70 strokes wow. okay. uh, per player, uh, you know, serving, serving and receiving. So, more than a worse than last so 10 dead on out of, say, 65, 70, 70 strokes. Yeah, that's a very high proportion of his points coming now from, uh, well, a lot, a lot of time now being spent aiming for, uh, aiming for that target. Last. Chase was more than a yard worse there. Oh, crikey, you can't get close than that. Caught can you? a little bit of luck within that quarter. Mathieu showing his uh, racket in uh, in an apology. He's really digging in. He's, um, he's not giving up the chase here at all. loose from uh, John there just a little bit maybe a bit too wristy on the on, on that shot yeah I think it's testament to that forward attacking play oh <laughs> when he's really chasing after John and really forcing it and he's um, really getting some dividends in there and forcing him into those errors I think as well gone to this sort of longer, deeper serve that's mm -hmm. cutting right into the middle <coughs> of the court. It's quite an interesting tactic to go to, especially with the floor play <coughs> that she was so good at. He can kind of just cut it into the corners. Yeah, I wonder a little bit if, if John's maybe just starting to try out a couple of couple of different bits and pieces maybe um, you know we wh where are we now we're halfway through the halfway through the third set um, and John's been uh, being pretty comfortable uh, throughout this match um, so maybe John is starting to try a couple of different bits and pieces Matcha I think is, is starting to experiment on a, a few different shots a few different types of serve a few different uh, a few different tactics as well so love hazard second gallery Matt second. Mathieu with a chance to get back to two games to three though. Oh, it's a great defensive volley two by Mathieu there. And John looking very two tall three, there as he's striking the ball. Mm. Um, as a result, the ball never really getting a chance to go over the net. Got on, got on top of it, didn't he? Mm. again there this is a this is turning to a very quick game there's only been uh, three very very quick rests here and a quite a loose surf from Mathieu that John is going to just pick his spot good shot into the last gallery there it's really unlike him actually it's his serving's normally incredibly tight mm. it's one of his real key parts of his game is tight serve and being able to really punish the opponent with a loose return mm. so a <coughs> couple more stats on the screen about chases conceded uh, we can see that Cam very much game leading the way in, uh, in that match in that statistic um, and that's, that's very indicative of uh, Camden style of play or how people try and uh, get into Camden's play. He, the fitness that he uh, that he has, just present preventing very few chances for people to set chases or or even just trying to uh, to open up into the galleries. It's a real strength of Camden's game. Yeah, I 
but I still fancy him volleying out of first gallery, to be honest with you, if you were aiming for that. So. <laughs> in this rest alone oh well played that's a fantastic finish <coughs> really punished the high gallery hit there so well that maybe he's better off down the other end. 30, yeah, Match has not, not had an awful lot of success in commanding and controlling the service end either. Uh, unfortunately, you know, normally you would you know, normally you'd expect a person oh. down serving and to, uh, to be in charge of most of the points, but um, Mathieu has not had an awful lot of success down this end of the court. Oh, he's worked. He's worked that point so well there. And he's just clipped the timbre on the way past as well. It's just almost the perfect shot for that situation. Momentum going one way and can't change in that time period. John with a game point here to, t to go within one game of the victory. Been very, very efficient. Looks like he stayed within his comfort zone and played very, very well. And the game, five games to two. But I think what, it, what it's also felt like is that John has been very much, you know, a casting aside kind of the targets that he's been using. John's very much been playing Mathieu at Mathieu's game. I 100% agree, yeah. He's uh, come out with a clear game plan. Uh, and I think that's probably caught Mathieu out quite a, you know, quite, quite a lot there. I think like we were saying earlier, he's... Um, really forced him to change the way he Enough. normally plays. Mm. Normally that beautiful ground stroking game, he's had to go for longer chases and then he's not been able to defend those longer chases. Fantastic play there, which I'm just picking it up against the <coughs> 15 -0. relatively quickly what could be a really really tricky match against a good player if he can see it through <laughs> <laughs> commentators curse again so this match is in the kind of bottom half of the draw uh, so the winner of this match will be taking on the winner of our third quarter final match this afternoon which will be Bryn Sayers versus Ben Taylor Matthews, uh, which uh, I yeah I'm thinking is going to be an absolute crackerjack oh, of uh, of a quarter final. So please do uh, please do stick around for that. The paper on court. So John's coming down the service end with uh, a match point. He looks very relaxed. First gallery. First gallery. So. Could be a fair bit of running involved here. Oh, what a way to finish. Great pick up, cross court shot. Skidding along. So that is uh, the end of our first quarter final uh, this afternoon. So John Lumley goes through to the semi finals with a six. 
Sorry, six love, six one, six two victory. We'll see some of the the match statistics uh, up on up on the screen here. Um, there are definitely points in that match where uh, you know where, where you think John and Mathieu were getting getting pretty close, but Mathieu just generally kind of struggling to kind of keep building momentum, kind of putting uh, putting a number of different points together, um, and. John, I think, particularly towards the end of that match, starting to get some kind of quicker points, starting to move uh, move bits and pieces along uh, a little bit. Um, brutally, brutally quick, I have to say. That was one hour and two minutes, uh, which combined with a one hour and 20 minute match that we had uh, earlier on uh, in his first match against Oliver Pridmore. Uh, actually, you know, he's, he's made his way to the final four with actually relatively little game time um, at all. Um, but uh, I'm sure there will be bigger challenges and bigger tasks coming up for him in the semi-finals. We're going to leave things here for uh, this first quarter-final match. We're going to be back at 2 o'clock UK times in about 45 minutes or so uh, with our second quarter-final of the day, uh, which will be Nicky Howell versus Rob Shankman. So please do join us for that. Um, be a and fantastic yeah, game. That'll be a fantastic match. So do join us back at two o'clock for for that match. Thank, Thank you very you. much.